Gospel of June the 30th, 2016, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After entering a boat, Jesus made the crossing and came into his own town. And there people brought him a paralytic laying on a stretcher. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Courage, child, your sins are forgiven. At that, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. Jesus knew what they were thinking and said, Why do you harbor evil thoughts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, Rise, pick up your stretcher, and go home. He rose and went home. When the crowd saw this, they were struck with awe, and glorified God who had given such authority to men. Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, okay, I'm going to start by the end again, the ending. The glorified God who had given such authority to men. To whom has God given the authority to forgive sins? To all priests, whether they are presbyters or bishops. That is the power of the keys of heaven. But it's not the authority by their own. They are just instruments of God. Let us remember what is what are the words of the right when the priest says to the penitent, by the power invested in me by the Holy Church. I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. It is God always who is forgiving. In this case, through the person of the priest. We see how the scribes are immediately thinking badly of the Lord. He is blaspheming. Yet, they are not humble enough to recognize the Lordship of the Lord when He calls to their attention their own thinking in their own hearts. They never said anything. But yet the Lord knew what they were thinking in their hearts. Why are you harboring evil thoughts in your hearts? Why? If they had been a little bit humble, they would have immediately said, How did he know what we were thinking? And then they would they would have to recognize that he is God. He makes a question, the Lord makes a question. What is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven or rise and walk? We could um, foolishly say, well, it's easier for you to say your sins are forgiven. But then you would not realize that sins are a transgression against God and only God. If I offend you, one of my brothers, you would be the one to say, well, I forgive you. But if I, forgive, if I offend God, it's God and only God who can forgive my trespasses. So that is very exclusive of God. Yet, because we cannot see how God forgives, He gives on He goes on to say, Rise, pick up your stretcher and go. So that we all would see that He has forgiven the sins. Now there are two things that I would like to point out and that to me are the most precious things in this whole in this whole gospel. The first one is the people. You see, the whole scene arised because there was a paralytic, a man who could not move. And he had this family, these friends, who wanted, who first believed in, in Jesus and wanted him to get, well, to get well. So they put him in the stretcher. They took him out from where he was living, all the way to where the Lord was and presented him to the Lord. Even in the Gospel according to Mark, 
they say that it was impossible for them to get before the Lord. So they climbed on top of the house, um, made a hole on the, on the roof, and lowered the paralytic with ropes through that hole. And that is incredible. That will be enough to make a very nice story. But is that all? Is that just a nice story? No, it's not by any means. What does the paralytic man mean? Well, he means someone who cannot get close to God. And who could that be? Someone who thinks that he is an atheist. Someone who is so prideful, so haughty, haughty that uh, he believes that he does not need God. Someone who might be bound up by grave sin in such a way that he cannot even claim to God. Have we ever been there? Have we seen anyone who is like that? Wouldn't it be great if you could help your wife, your husband, your child, your father, your friend, or even, even better, your enemy? To be presented before God and have him healed by his words because the Lord saw the faith of those that were carrying the paralytic so you see there you could save literally many people from hell as long as you get prepared to carry the paralytic to carry the burden to pray for the other and that is one of the greatest charities of all times to pray for those who persecute us to pray for those who do not want to be prayed for to help the paralytics lastly but not leastly is the heart of the God he is not expecting the paralytic to repent he is not demanding the paralytic to repent he accepts the faith of those that carry the paralytic to his presence and immediately with a tender heart he heals them he heals him let us rejoice that we have such a God such a brother in Jesus and let us ask and pray to have our faith reinforced to have our faith grown and to be resolute to carry many paralytics before the Lord in our prayers. Let us pray especially for all the ordained ministers, for all the religious peoples, for the vocations, and for sinners. And when you remember the sinners, remember me also in your prayers. And count on my prayer as I pray for you every day. Until we meet in heaven, God bless you all brothers.